exactly one year ago from today, life took me and my family by surprise. And it was that our house caught on fire and everything inside burned. It definitely felt like life just like, like sucker punches, right? It caught us by surprise. And I definitely didn't think that I'll be doing a TED talk on it a year later. But strangely, this time allowed me to see that the things in front of us, kind of like my house, right, can be taken away like that. And that whatever's in front of you, the opportunities in front of you, whether, whatever it is, your career goals, your sport, your academics, that it can be taken away like that. And it's our job to act on it. So with that said, I invite you to close your eyes. And I'm going to do it with you guys too. And I want you to travel into the future, specifically five years from today. See yourself in your career goals, your life after college, getting or staying in shape, or the place you've been dying to visit, right? Get really personal, like be there. And slowly open your eyes, right? And I want you to think, what does it cost to get there, right? For college, the tuition is given to you, that's how much it costs to get the degree, get the education. Or getting in shape, right? $10 a month at Planet Fitness, simple. But what if getting what you just envisioned, right, was nothing monetary, but it was willingness to sacrifice your time. It was investing more time or extra time into the things that seem insignificant now, but eventually lead up. And that's what I wanna share today. The idea of opportunity cost coming from a sense of action and reaction. That look, me and you, we all come from different backgrounds, we all have different struggles, we all have different ambitions but we're all given the same amount of time. And it's what we do with that time that produces the future that you just envision. So I wanna share an example from my life where I felt that I had to sacrifice some of my time. So since, ever since I was five, I started playing football. And in middle school, I decided, I was like, you know, I'm gonna take this serious. So I started doing two a days, I started working out, I started having private sessions, I started working out on the weekends, and everything in my life was just catered towards football, right? And Everything was going well. When I got into high school, I actually made it to the varsity team as a freshman. Felt like I was on top of the world. That, that I think the team actually went undefeated that year and won the championship. But, right, every story has a but. But my family and I decided that after football that we wanted to make the best decision for myself. So we decided that I'll be transferring over to St. Thomas Aquinas. But it came with a cost. And a cost that I didn't see then, but clearly see now. And that cost was sacrificing a lot of my time away from my family, from my beautiful Isa. I have to clarify, by the way, that's my sister and not my daughter. So a lot of time between two hours on the bus, practice, sacrificing the comfort of being surrounded by my friends. Like if you guys have ever been traveling like to another country or another state and you hear them speaking like, but you don't understand their language, that's kind of how it feels going into a new school. Like you don't understand people's lingo, you don't know anybody, you don't know what they're talking about. So it kind of feels like you're just a foreigner, dropped, right? And then really letting go of my ego, like working from the ground up, right? But if it wasn't for those things, if it wasn't for those uncomfortable events, I wouldn't be literally in this red dot, moving my hands crazy, talking to you guys, right? And sometimes in the same way you could look at your life and ask yourself, what are the things that you need to sacrifice, right? What are the things that are keeping you from where you wanna be? It may be bad habits, it may be bad company, but whatever is stripping you away from your time, be personal with yourself and ask yourself, what is it that I need to let go of to get more time to put to the thing I wanna achieve most? So. Now, hopefully, the idea in your head, picture painted, should be that you're trying to get much time to put towards whatever future that you just envisioned. But now I think the most important part is the decisions that you make with that time. Because you can have a bunch of time and not do anything, but clearly it's not gonna get you anywhere. So in preparation for this talk, I did a curious study. And I wanted to see what was the difference between students with the highest grades and students with the lowest. So I went around the class, I was like, hey, like, do you mind sharing your grade, how you got it? Do you mind sharing your grade, how you got it? And about 13 out of the 22 that I interviewed said that they had a B plus. And about nine out of the 13 said that they just went home, that they studied, they did their homework on time, they turned it in before time. And before a test, that they would study days before. And on the contrary, students with the lower grades said that they would just go home, they would copy their homework, 
right? And the day of the test, there was 35 minutes before. It seems obvious, right? It's very obvious why there was such a big gap. But I wanted to share this example because I thought it had little to do with their IQ. It had little to do with their intelligence. They weren't Albert Einstein to get good grades, but they made the right decisions that produce them having grades, right? They took time away from going out with their friends, from being on Netflix, from taking a nap, whatever it was. They took time away from that to put it into their studies, which gave them the opportunity to have a good grade, right? So I really share this for two reasons. One is that you don't have to be born into the perfect circumstances to get your desired outcome, meaning you don't have to be born in, with right genetics to get in better shape. You don't have to be born in Albert Einstein to get good grades or to get a good education. And you don't have to be born in the right financial circumstances to get into better financial circumstances. And the second reason I share that is because when we focus our time and energy, right, kind of like a cat, like if you guys ever seen a cat with a red dot, like all they're thinking about is that dot, right? Like they're like waiting there and they're like, Right? And they like, they go for it. Kind of when we're like that with the things in front of us, when we're laser focused, that's, and we sacrifice time for it, that is what we just envision really comes to life. So before I end, right, before I end my crazy hand movements, I want to leave you with a parable. This parable was from the Bible, and it was about a farmer. I modified it a little bit to make more sense with the talk, but the parable was about a farmer that was given four pots, right? Imagine, one pot here, one pot here, one pot, one pot here. And the farmer was given a bag of seeds. And he was asked to plant the seeds, right, in the pot. So, got the bag, got the seeds, placed it in the first pot. He waited there, he didn't put anything in there, he was waiting, he was like, go, 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 grow, 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 grow. Nothing happened, right? The next pair, he got rocks, he was like, this is the one. So he put rocks in there, and then he got another handful of seeds, put it in there. Again, he waited days, weeks, nothing happened. Right? The next part, he reinvented the wheel with this one. He put thorns in there. He was like, this is the one. So he, when he put thorns in there, he dropped the seeds. Right? He was waiting again, days and weeks. Grow, 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 grow. Nothing happened. But finally, the last part, he placed in perfect soil that when he placed the seeds, he watered it, that he put it near sunlight, and it grew crops or fruits 50 times of what he put. So I invite everybody, everybody watching, everybody here to think about your life as that seed. Think about what you just envisioned as that seed, that it only comes to life if you do the things necessary, if you put it in the right environment. And sometimes, kind of like my house fire, right? Like, things happen. Like, we can't control it. Life just happens. But you got to take that, like, rain is to a crop, right? Like, in the moment, it looks like it's flooding the crops, but it's a part of the process. It's a part of the nurture, right? So, truly, my encouragement is, wherever you are in your life and wherever you want to go, to always live in the moment, like, really be in the moment, but make rational decisions for your future. And the things that are in front of you, do not take them for granted. Really double down on them because you never know when it's your last. Thank you.